David, uh, you had a very special World Bank event where, among others, you spoke with the president of Ukraine, Vladimir Zelensky. There's, it's very clear, and he made it clear, that there are be billions and billions of dollars needed to keep Ukraine going now and to rebuild at some point. Do you think that the danger here is right now uh, the world is watching, um, there's a lot of support and sympathy, but as we go down the road, will the resources be there? Will the will be there from, from nations around the world to support Ukraine at the kind of levels that are going to be needed now? These are huge challenges for the world to have a sustained effort of uh, of support. Uh, so I don't know into the future. I know the World Bank will be there. We will have a sizable program in the in the rebuilding effort. I'm sure Europe will. And we have a, a number of partners in this effort. Uh, they're already contributing to the trust funds that are being used in uh, Ukraine itself. And of course, uh, President Zelensky made the strong case that this is in the world's interest to support Ukraine. Do you agree that it's in the world's interest? And in what way? Again, what is the compelling argument for nations to give up some of their own resource to help Ukraine now? In the, the direct effect is Ukraine is part of the global production chain, so the, the world needs that production. Uh, the, and then looking beyond that, uh, there needs to be a, a clarity in the world about values, about direction, about uh, uh, the orientation of economies, but also the, the necessity of peace. Uh, and so there's a, there's a huge uh, world interest in having the war stop uh, and in having having the world not do this again. Emerging markets have been hit hard. Food crises, so many of these things, that's where people get hit the hardest. And that's where a lot of investors put their money. So from that standpoint, again, if there's a sort of a self-interested reason for people in advanced nations to pay more attention to what's going on in some of these conflict-ridden places, does it have something to do with, with that? This is a huge point. I, I, there has to be a win-win solution for development, where the where the countries that are weaker grow faster uh, and create markets and and output uh, that uh, that is part of the world uh, world community. Um, that is the goal. Uh, I've been working in this field for a long time, and it's just very challenging uh, because the the we there keep. The, you know, the setbacks, there have been many setbacks. The Latin debt crisis in the 1980s and the Asia crisis in the 1990s. Um, what, on, a, on a hopeful sign, we, we've seen China make a lot of progress. India makes substantial progress. These are big population centers moving forward, okay. and it creates market opportunities. Right now, the challenge is higher interest rates uh, oftentimes are not favorable for developing countries, and this this time included. I'm hoping the central banks will use all of their tools. They're, they can they can shrink their balance sheets. They can also mm -hmm. shrink their their du the duration of their balance sheets, and those would be both be stimulative for supply, uh, right. and that's a critical part of the solution.